at the close of the day. It is Tuesday, the 26th day of April, year of our Lord's 2022. I do pray this finds you well this evening. And of course, the question on everybody's mind is, will it ever warm up? Sunny today, but still not very warm. I haven't seen like a big warm up in the weather report for the next several days. It's dry, which is good. Our farmers are getting antsy to get out in the field. But uh, a little warmer weather would be nice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. We turn again to the daily lectionary tonight, reading again from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4, beginning at verse 31. And he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed, and said to one another, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. The reports about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. And he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose and began to serve them. Now when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out, many crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And the people sought him and came to him and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. And that is the gospel of the Lord. And that ends chapter 4. So this, of course, we have uh, a number of healings and uh, a confession by, and it's fascinating because this often happens very early in the gospels, not just Luke. But the confession of the demons of who he is, and they use an Old Testament title for the Messiah, the Holy One of God. Uh, there was this concept, it wasn't as explicit as it is in the New Testament. There was certainly a concept, concept of the, of the uh, three persons within the one God, the Holy Trinity, in the Old Testament. So you see a God and his Holy One. You hear about uh, God and the Spirit. Uh, let us make man in our image. So it's there from the beginning. It's very explicit in the New Testament. Um, this idea of the, the Trinity, you know, the three persons, one God. And it's interesting that the demon here in this case, you know, uses that Old Testament title, as I mentioned. Now, this, this is bracketed, this, all these healings by um, this phrase, really. I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well for this for I was sent for this purpose, that preaching the good news, uh, the gospel is the good news, the word oiangelion, we get the word evangelical. Uh, and it's interesting in, in the language that the New Testament was recorded in Greek, Koine Greek, that it can be both a, uh, a noun uh, or a verb that you are, uh, you are good newsed. So going back to what we heard last night, we hear as he's 
teaching. He was reading from Isaiah in the synagogue. And we hear that again tonight about him in the synagogue. We hear that as he's reading from Isaiah 61, that he's going to proclaim good news to the poor. And at the end, we hear that he is going to preach the good news to the kingdom of God and the other towns as well. And he goes to the synagogues where the word of God is being read. In fact, the apostles will do that when, the, when they are sent out after Pentecost. The first places they go are to the synagogues uh, where the word of God is being read. And they begin to expand it. They deliver the New Testament where they, you know, the, they're witnesses of, of what Christ did. And they proclaim the good news in those places. This is what this is all about. It's about Jesus. Now, we hear again this sort of nuance. It was much harsher last night. It's gentler tonight about how they want to prevent him from leaving uh, because he's doing all these healings, which you, you know, in our desperateness, we would do the same thing. If there was a, a magnificent doctor among us that could really quickly and easily heal people like Jesus does because he's God, um, you know, we, you wouldn't want that doctor to ever leave your town. But the healings are are showing who he is, showing that as this new creation breaks into this old creation, that things are being undone, that, that he is... Uh, uh, has the power over creation. But most importantly, it is the proclamation of good news where the true healing occurs. And that proclamation of the gospel is where you and I are actually healed. I like to point out, we just had this discussion in our, in our uh, Tuesday evening Bible study just a short while ago, actually, that all the people Jesus heals and raises from the dead, what happened? They got sick again. They died again. You think of Lazarus and, and uh, but you know, the, these people that Jesus interacts with, they die. You know, and he says here at the end, he's like, you know, he departs and there's still, you know, they, there's, you never run out of people who need healing. Well, all need it at some point. And they, they want to keep him from leaving. And he says, no, I, you know, I must preach the good news of kingdom to other towns as well. He has to go on because the healing is not the cure. Right? The healing is is in the gospel. When you are baptized into the gospel, you are covered with the blood of Christ and baptism, forgiven of all your sins, you're buried, as Paul says in Romans chapter 6, you're buried and raised again with him. You are now part of the new creation. Yeah, your body will die, but it will rise. You know, the old order of things no longer apply to you. Your sin can't accuse you anymore. Satan can't accuse you because it's been put to death in Christ. Uh, we, we finally begin to see how to love properly and how to live as God's people, and it won't be completed until we again rise from the dead. But you have been healed. You've been healed of uh, what the claim that death has on you has been taken away, which is sin, the wage of sin is death. You have actually been healed. And that's what we do as pastors. We are constantly pointing people to that. This, this, is, where, this is where it happens. You know, we, I mean, we pray for healing. We want people to get better. But always in the back of our minds is that, yeah, you know, one of these days, God is going to answer the prayer of healing. You know, there are ways we pray for healing by saying, no, they're coming with me now. You know, they're going to die. But he's already answered the prayer in baptism, you know, which happened years and years and years before in most cases. Uh, you know, the prayer, before we could ever even utter it, was answered because we were given Christ, and in him we have life. This is why he came. And not just to go around and be a faith healer, all right, but to give us the faith which heals us, which is himself, which is the gospel, the good news. Let's now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, strengthen us by your Spirit, by your Holy Word, that we may be delivered and stand firm against temptation and the attacks of the evil one. Be with those who are addicted to substances, other things, and those who despair of your love. Raise them up and keep, remember, keep them ever mindful of your love. Be with those who are tortured and oppressed, especially those who are tortured and oppressed for the faith and the confession of your holy name. Keep them steadfast in their confession until that day they stand before your throne and turn the hearts of the oppressors that they may stand alongside us and confess your saving work. Be with all of us each day as we struggle with sin. Keep us ever mindful of your forgiveness. Uh, lead us not into temptation and uh, show us the way out when we are uh, succumbing to temptation and, uh, and bless us. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who are crying out to you for healing be with Dave, Lucille, Dawn, Dennis, Betty, Tony, Nicholas, Jason, Josiah, Joe, Dee, Dylan, Katie, Marge, Carrie, Jill, Julie, and all who are crying out to you. Place your hand upon them, answer their prayers and our prayers on their behalf according to your gracious will, keeping all of us ever mindful of your victory even over death itself. Heavenly Father, we ask you to pray for Emmanuel Lutheran Church and Bethlehem Lutheran Church and in Johnson City, Tennessee, as uh, as I now am in the deliberation process of, of uh, answering uh, the call. Um, grant all of us, but especially those two churches, patience, and, uh, and grant me wisdom and discernment. Heavenly Father, all this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn 644. Uh, I sing this frequently, a beloved hymn of the English-speaking church, The Church is One Foundation. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth. Her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace endued. Though with a scornful wonder the world sees her oppressed, by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed, Yet saints their watch are keeping, their cry goes up how long, and soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song. Through toil and tribulation and tumult of her war, she waits the consummation of peace forevermore. Till with the vision glorious, her longing eyes are blessed, and the 
great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Yet she on earth has union with God the three in one, and mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. O blessed heavenly chorus, Lord, save us by your grace, that we, like saints before us, may see you face to face. And again, is hymn 644 in its entirety, The Church is One Foundation. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.